Hello, hello, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice. Yes, we are going to rejoice and we are going to be glad in it. Pastor Danielle here. I am the lead pastor here at Christian Church for All Nations and we are located at 14205 East 12 Mile here in the beautiful city of Warren, Michigan. How are you doing on this Tuesday morning? Yes, it is Tuesday in the Great Mitten State. It is a fine, yes, it is still summer, but we can tell the seasons are changing. It is a fine sorry, Tuesday morning here. And I'm so excited once again to be with you here in this platform, in this format, where we can talk about the Word of God and how it applies to our everyday life. And of course, first off, before anything, we're going to get ready to open up in a time of prayer. And so if, as I always say, if you don't know, if you do need prayer, please let us know in the comments how we can pray for you. And also, as you are praying, your prayer requests are being answered. Let us know why, because we want to rejoice with you and we want to testify and let others know what the Lord is doing. And so that they can be encouraged and understand that the Lord is no respecter of persons. Praise be the Lord. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just thank you once again for this day that you've blessed us with. This day that we have made the decision that yes, we are going to rejoice. And yes, we will be glad in it. Once again, Lord, I do think it considered an honor and a privilege that we can gather together in this format to discuss your word and how it applies to our everyday life. Where we take this time right now to lift up the needs of my fellow brothers and sisters, where I don't know all the details of what they're dealing with or what the need may be. But thank you, Lord God, that there is the need that's going to be met according to your word. So Lord, we thank you for your word says, by your stripes, we were healed. Thank you, Lord God, that you are a provider. Thank you, Lord God, that you restore you men, you heal the broken heart, Lord, that you can restore relationships and marriages and families. So we release whatever it may be. We take our hands off and we lift our hands up and surrender to you and say, Lord, I trust you in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, again, how is it going on this fine Tuesday morning for you, Oregon? It could be a little later in the day when you're at wherever you're tuning in at. But once again, it is again, it's great to be here on this day. And, you know, I love you know, this time of year where you can be outside. And for right now, we can enjoy the elements because here in Michigan, we know the elements will change. And hey, that's just a part of of things happening. You know, there are different seasons, different changes that happen with every season. And so that's what we're going to talk about on this morning, but talking about commitment and in order to be committed to something, you have to commit yourself to that. And so as particularly this time of year, I know for many, some have already started back to school and you're already back in school or for some of those, you are in the thrones of getting ready to go back to school. How's that looking for you? For those who are getting ready to go back to school, are you excited for the new school? If you are going back to school, let me know what you're most excited about. One thing I remember is, of course, the activities that are involved with when you go back to school. And when you get involved with different activities and different groups, guess what you got to do? You got to kind of make a commitment. And again, commitment, you know, making a commitment means you have to take the time to make that commitment. Have you ever committed yourself to something and you thought, oh my goodness, what did I get myself in? Been there, done that has happened many a times where you got and you say, oh yeah, this looks really good. Like this looks like something I'm, go- I'm really going to like be good at or something I will be like excited to do. Well, I remember like maybe back like in elementary school or middle school, you know, since it is back to school, it's story time just for briefly. And I remember, you know, back in school that I had this wonderful idea that I was going to try to take some type of music lessons. You know, I tried the keyboard and I very, 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 very briefly tried to play the flute. Here it is. I hear it, my elementary school, middle school self making this commitment. Like, yeah, I'm going to endeavor in this. There was a little problem. This is just a smidgen of problem with all of that. Guess what? I am not musically gifted. No, 
I am not musically gifted whatsoever. I have many family members that are gifted musically, that can sing, that can play. That <laughs> gifting missed a generation because it did not fall here on me. But I thought, but let me try this because I thought learning to play the keyboard or playing the flute. I thought, oh, wow, that will be pretty awesome to be able to do. Well, it was a train wreck and trust and believe. Now I did better at the keyboard and I still wasn't great at it. I could just barely get a little few tunes out on the keyboard and my mind just was not connecting really good to playing left hand and right hand, but I survived that better than playing that learning, well, excuse me, learning or trying to endeavor to play the flute. So that was a very short term commitment. But when we look things and as we grow in the Lord, we have to understand that we're going to have many opportunities as we grow in the Lord and as we navigate finding our place when it comes to what are we going to do in ministry. And you may not necessarily be called to full-time ministry where you're a senior pastor or in that area, but guess what? You are going to be called by the Lord as a child of God to do something that he has given to you. And you have to be committed to doing that very thing. And again, commitment takes making a commitment. And the word of God says in Psalm 37 and five, commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Now we got to look at this in the scripture. Now we're committing your way to the Lord. And some people will look at scripture and take scripture uh, so much out of context. And we have to understand when you commit your way to the Lord, that means that's a part of saying, I'm committing my will to you, Lord, and I am going to trust you, trust in you, because guess what? With commitment comes on your side to Billy to, to say, Lord, I trust you in this endeavor, in this gifting, in this vision that you have called me to do. Here's the thing. You know, back, you know, for many of you who are in college right now or in high school and you're at that phase in your life, like, oh my goodness, what's next? And the, one of the first things that happens when you get to college is that they want you to what? To declare a major, declare a major. Now, how many of you may have been on that fence where you have declared a major and you change your mind because you were not committed to that path that you were going down to? I remember when I started my journey at Spring Arbor University that I was going to com my, commit myself to early education. That lasted all of a semester. I was not committed to that because here it was I had to learn as I had to commit my way to the Lord and trust him also. And in, in the manner of doing that, the Lord gave me direction so that I was committed to the path that he had called me on. The thing is, I could not go down anyone else's path. And that's the one thing we have to understand that just as I thought as being music, learn, trying to learn how to play a musical instrument, that that was the path that I thought that I should do go on again. I thought, I thought that I didn't consult with the Lord. I just thought it was pretty cool that when you were able to play an instrument, I think musicians are great, but again, it was not my gifting. It was not my talent, but in the committee myself, to the Lord and committing my way to the Lord. That means committing my will to the Lord. He brought me down a path that I would never thought he would have brought me down. And I remember when the Lord says, okay, you're in college now, here is where you're going to have declare your major. And it was something that was complete opposite of what I thought I would be doing. And for me going down the path of communications. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, the Lord called me to communications in college. And I remember I'm like, Lord, you want me to do communications? You want me to do major in public speaking? And I said, Lord, do you not remember? Hello, did we not have a conversation about my fear of public speaking? Did we, do you not remember the incidents in, in middle school and elementary school with doing those readings in front of the entire school assembly? Like, no, 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 Lord, we're good on this. The thing is, when you say, Lord, I'm making a commitment to you. The thing is the same thing as number one, when you make that decision to live for the Lord, you're making that decision. Say, Lord, I'm committing my life into you. I'm committing all of my ways, Lord, to you. And yes, that is a journey that we go on. And in that journey, we learn to trust. And in that trust journey, as we trust in him, guess what he's going to do? 
he's going to bring those things to pass according. Also, we understand this very key fact according to what's best for our life. So when you commit your way to the Lord, guess what he's going to do? He is going to, yes, he's going to bless you. He's going to do these great and mighty things, but you've got to get to the place where I'm committing my way to you. The word of God says in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with your own of all your heart and lean not into your own understandings, but, all, but in what? In all of your ways, acknowledge him. And guess what he's going to do? Guess what he's going to do when you acknowledge him and trust in him? He is going to direct your path. What better way than this day to say, Lord, maybe I've been doing this thing on my own. And I see it is not working out as I'm doing these things on my own. Maybe I made the wrong commitments to things that I know I should not have gotten involved in. Maybe I made the wrong decisions. But guess what? Today, on Tuesday, August 13th, right now it's 741 EST. Today is the day that you can say, Lord, I am going to change the whole trajectory of my life. I'm going to commit all of my ways, all of my wills to you and say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust you. You need sometimes you have to verbalize that very thing. Say, Lord, I trust you. It may not make sense from what I'm seeing from, but Lord, give me your spiritual eyesight so that I can just say, Lord, I'm taking my hands off because I know that as I commit myself to you, Lord, that you are not going to lead me down a road that's going to do me harm, that you're going to give me purpose and direction. And that is my prayer for you all today that are in that place of just, I just don't know, especially for those who are in high school and you're making the decision of what next and you're in college and you're just like out there and you're just like, ah, what am I to do? Or maybe you're in job transitions or just life transitions, whatever it is, you have to look to the Lord and say, Lord, whatever it may be that I need to do, I'm going to commit to it and I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to stick to reading your word, stick to doing what your word says, and I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to commit my way to you and trust in the Lord and watch him work on your behalf. And that is what I just wanted to share with you, that little brief little nugget on today. And of course, looking forward to seeing you on tomorrow night for Worship and the Word here at CC Fan. Just one hour, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., Come get your midweek free set. And of course, next week, guess what next week is? If you have not heard, it is Vacation Bible School. That starts on August 22nd and it goes to August 24th from 6.30 to 8.30. Be sure to register your children ages 5 through 12. And I'll make sure I'll drop the flyer in this after this broadcast. Get your kids to Vacation Bible School. We want to pour into them. We want to speak the name of Jesus over them. We want to pray with them and we want to ask make the giftings in them. Yes, even at that very young age. And we're going to pray that they make the brave decision to commit to what the Lord has called them to do. And most importantly, that they will, if they don't know the Lord, that on next week, that they will give their lives to the Lord. And we look forward to the journey that they're going to be on. And we're going to be with them on that journey. So looking forward to all these things. And of course, Sunday morning here at CC Fan, looking forward to seeing you here as well. But let's close out in prayer. Lord, we just once again, thank you for this time, this opportunity where we can once again come to discuss your word and how it applies to our everyday life. Lord, we understand what it means now to be committed in what we're doing according to what you want for us. And for those who have been struggling Those who may be on the fence, Lord, let them make a commitment to you first. And as they commit to you, Lord God, help them to let them commit their way and their will to you and that they will trust you and knowing that you will give them direction and that you will bring those visions that you place in them to pass. So, Lord, we thank you for this in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, have an awesome rest of your day. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Wednesday, Sunday morning, 11. And of course, looking forward to seeing all the kiddos for vacation Bible school on next week. Bye-bye.